implement the CARP plan and go with what you think is the most and most beneficial and then tell us what you did. And I think, so I, I would support a more generic, but more specific action oriented, action based goal document. Andy. Yeah, I think that there's several things that I think about. One is, is that we need to um, think about the number and complexity of the goals and to make sure in our own minds that it's reasonable uh, because we have some pretty complex goals and the awful lot of them. And uh, is it fair to ask anybody to handle that number of complex goals, which then gets into the next question as to whether uh, there are ad there's adequate staffing and resources available to do this, which I touched on a little bit in the evaluation I wrote, because I really am concerned that, uh, you know, in the, the loss of Sean Bangano and uh, several other senior staff people, uh, including Brianna, uh, it, it just seemed like uh, we really have hit a point where it just may not be uh, that we have resourced either in people or in funds to expect that those go that that number of goals can get addressed, which then gets to my third and final thing, which is that um, we have to make sure that goals are doable. Um, and to say that we want you to solve the problem of housing of middle income people in Amherst to make that more doable, um, this isn't you know a local problem or a statewide problem. This is a national problem. And how can you how what what are we expecting? Um, and is it reasonable again? So I think that those are the kinds issues that I, think that, uh, I hope that GOL looks at all of them and thinks about it before it comes back at the final time. So one of the things that I, besides the fact that I think there's way too many goals and there's too many sub goals, is how do we then look across the goals and say, what of this is reasonable? What do we really want to do? In other words, if we lined up everything mentioned in those goals, and then we were to say, okay, what is our what are our individual priorities? How would that line up? And then how do we say, across all of this, what is truly reasonable to expect? So it's not just setting goals, it's saying, what are our top priorities? What are we really, where do we want the town's resources to be spent? The second thing is to acknowledge and somehow identify within the goals, what are multi-year goals and what could be accomplished in a year or a couple of years. And um, so that we, don't get to the end of you know nine or ten months and say oh well that that wasn't accomplished when in fact maybe it's not something that can be accomplished in that year for any number of reasons so those are a couple of thoughts um i do want to remind counselors particularly those of us that were on the first council we actually used to rate the sub goals and I, that was tedious, and then we decided we'd go to just rating the goal, and yet all of us find that, you know, G, goal, sub goal one, yes, did well, sub goal two did well, no, didn't do sub goal three, didn't do sub goal four, so that creates yet another complexity as we look at these goals. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer. Yeah, I just... Um... I agree with you. We don't want to have, I think you counted, you said in GOL, there were like 90 tasks for the, you know, and that's crazy for that. We would ask that of our town manager. 
but there's, I think some areas where we have to be specific and even at, you know, like Paul's request, because in 2021, we were talking about the waste, you know, hauler bylaw. And then, you know, Paul said, well, if we wanted, you know, staff time to be devoted to that, we should make that a goal. So there are some, and it is a multi-year goal, as is like community choice aggregation, which, you know, we have a real benchmark in February. I mean, that we're getting close to that. That was never anticipated, certain things that will happen in a year, but may, perhaps because they're multi-year, then we have to specify them in the town manager goal. So, because they do need staff time devoted to that. So I think that's the balance. I don't think we want to just say, well, you know, um, I, I think we probably have to give more direction than asking the town manager just to choose what part of the CARP that, you know, staff is going to work on. We can do that to some extent, but again, something like community choice aggregation or waste hauler where we were asked to specifically cite that as a goal so that staff resources would, would be made available. Anna? I think I'm curious about how to best, so what I'm, one of the things that I'm struck on is that well, some of us have been around longer than others in terms of our engagement on, on council and other, anyway, some of us have been around longer than others. It's 1055. Um, we don't know all of the complexities and the ins and outs of Paul's job. And he does an amazing job giving us a very thorough self-evaluation. But I'm really curious about the idea of if we made this a bit more of a joint process where I'm, I'm stuck on my initial thought of having objectives and then more clear um, action steps. If we were to create those objectives as a council and then present them to Paul who would pitch what he believes some of his action steps would be. And then we give feedback on those. Um, because I think that for us to come up with initial actions and deadlines for them and all of that doesn't necessarily take into account what is feasible. And Paul is the one who has a better grasp on that. So mm -hmm. Paul, I'm curious about your thoughts on kind of a, a deeper engagement on that part of the process, specifically, if we want to include specifics, which I think are helpful for all of us in terms of knowing kind of what, when done is done. Um, but also recognizing that our help, our, our efforts are probably more beneficial in the overarching objectives. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of good points being made. I think that's a, a successful goals one in which the, you know, the employee and the employer are sharing that in, that goal you in you you know this typical smart goals you have the resources or you identify the resources you need and all those things i think the idea of the council saying these are our five top things here's the type of thing we want and then having that be a dialogue i think it's really that would be a very powerful sort of unifying kind of conversation that happens i think there's the document the goal document usually tries to do two different things one is it has its sort of policy goals and then it has the sort of are you doing your job? Like, are you, you know, you know, doing all the things, you know, it, did you balance the budget type things? Right. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, it, it's never going to be comprehensive because we do a lot of different things. And then also new things come up during the course of the year, you know, COVID. Um, so I think that, you know, I, th I think we just have to decide what we want this document to be. You know, I think that the value, just so you know how I'd look at this, the value of this is really high to me, each of your individual comments, because I do read those and I pay attention, I internalize those. I'm not everyone, but you know, I, I try to do that. The um, the summary thing that, that Lynn works on or whoever's going to work on it, that's sort of an outward facing document because the, the content is here. The outward facing document is more for the public to see. And I think that's when I look at things, what I prepare for staff, it's like, it's going into your personnel file. So I do care about, they care what it, what it reads. And so I think that the purpose of the different documents can mean different things. So I think you need to be communicating to your constituents, your elected officials on what you, what your evaluation of the manager is. I think in terms of like my, the actual day-to-day -day performance that can happen through, I hear that here and we can have you know, I will obviously offer to sit down with anybody who wants to talk about it. Um, I think shared goals and choosing what those things are and sort of saying like, is this, the, are these the three, five things that we really want to get done this year? I think that'd be a really powerful document. 
it'd be much more powerful than a, a gigantic list. But I think it's really hard to do because you have to say no to mm -hmm. some things. And I don't know if the council, you've got 13 people, it's gonna be hard to reach consensus on that. Mm -hmm. It's totally challenging. We rarely get consensus. Um, yeah, I mean, I was also thinking in terms of having many goals and doing little, little, little of 10, 20 different things versus really going deep and getting some things really done. That was one thing. But then I was like, how do we decide? And that's kind of what we, as 13 people, and that's one of the things that's I've struggled with, you know, is how as a council are we prioritizing versus individually because it's my waste hauler is mine, therefore that should come before anything else. I mean, I I, I think we have to find a way as a group. I feel very proud of the work we've done in waste hauler and where it is. And I didn't push, there was a lot of, for example, uh, suggestions that, oh, it's a very simple bylaw, just pass it. But I knew there were the complexities and the impact it has. And so there's a process of proposing it because you know the regulations require that we propose the full bylaw. And also we need to get feedback from residents, from RFIs, from all. So there's a process that has to be, uh, done, but all that to say that um, I think there is a way for us as a group to come up with criteria for prioritizing, such as we've already identified our values in terms of climate action goals, racial equity, all of that, right? Now, within that, which other proposals that can start to make an impact with the least amount of resources, like which doesn't require a new staff member or, you know, like, so that could be one criteria, like even within waste hauler, yes, we could do with a new hire, but there are some best practices that can be implemented even without a new hire, right? So, I mean, that's what I'm trying to say is like, is there a way to put in criteria where the sponsors are sharing that here is how we can have impact in racial equity or in climate change with the least amount of, you know, the maximum impact with least amount of resources. So that could be one criteria. I just need to note that uh, somewhere around um, 1055, uh, Michelle Miller had to leave the meeting. Uh, Pat. I was looking for her because one of the things that she said in GOA. What? No, that's all right. I'll hold it. Thank you. <laughs> um, finally remember to hold it, and it still doesn't work. Uh, there's a word I'd like to share. Um, Michelle made a suggestion that we uh, have a retreat to focus on on what are our goals um and i think that's actually a really good idea because and and for me the criteria and the actions because it's the it, and i'm almost sitting here thinking well i don't agree with i'm just making this up with kathy about such and such so um she and i should work on the action steps for that so, you know, some way where we would have to come to some consensus or Mandy and I, or what I'm really just using an, ex, you know, an imaginary example, you know, whether or not that's something we want to do. And I think um, this would be best with the full new council mm -hmm. than it would be to, for this body. Now, although I would hate to lose Anika's voice, I would hate to lose your voice, uh, things like that. So, um. Pam, thank you, Pat. You took the words out of my mouth. Um, a shared uh, goal session, goal setting session would be very beneficial. And I think at some point it would be appropriate to include the town manager in that kind of work session to, um, I mean, I think we are responsible for setting some of the priorities, 
but we just had the conversation this evening about does does this new initiative take priority over everything else that we've asked the town manager to do for the year and i think that's the discussion i would love to have theoretically if if something like street light policy had been included as a as a um like an ecac goal or something it was or objective it was like we really need to focus on dark skies that would have been for me a more comfortable way to uh, you know because we would have all had to to vote on that list and so therefore i would have put my stamp of approval on that being an an action item or an objective for the town manager and it would not have you know seemed like came from you know it got priority over something else that that is on the list anyway sorry about that ramble I just it, it seems to me that we really would need to find a way to come to consensus because we don't agree about individual priorities whether street lights should come first or this come first or or whatever um, and so I I think yeah how do we how do we do that I think would be a really valuable experience for all of us. I guess I need at this point to ask Pat and other members of GL whether you think you've got enough out of this discussion to proceed. Nah. Yes. Actually, I think we have. Okay. Just to act like a grown-up, but I don't feel like that at 11 o'clock at night. Um, yep. Yes, I think we have some, and I also would encourage any counselor or any staff member, Paul, Athena, um, to send me the uh, other ideas and I will share those at the next meeting. Pam, did you still have your hand up or? Okay, Shalini. Um, I did because I just thought of another criteria which um, I'm forgetting, but uh, it'll come back to me in a minute. But it, like in terms of the criteria, one was like where we can get the maximum benefit with the least amount of resources. And I had another criteria as you were just talking um, that I wanted to share. Yeah. Uh, okay. I still want to share. Okay. I'll, if it comes back in a minute, I'll share it now. All right. We're going to move on. Kathy. Okay. I, I just have a question of what you want me to do, because I like the idea of the retreat a lot. I think we have too many goals and we have too many actions. And one of my evaluation comments of the manager is we gave you Mission Impossible and you did as much as you could about Mission Impossible. Um, so he at one point said someone came into his office and said, you know, six more staff positions. And he said, well, if I can only do one, which one would you choose? And they said six. Um, so I think, you know, I think, so I think the idea of a retreat, if we if we could come to the four or five biggies and not put, um, if you had told me enact national health care in Amherst, I would have said, don't make that a goal. Um, so we have a few that are, are, are values, they're important values, but I, I don't know what else I can do on the document I have because I wanted to slim it down all over the place. And if you just want me to redline it and, or what? I'm just asking for what I, I think, how I should be, spend my time. <laughs> Pat, do you want people to submit to you suggested changes? Yes, I do. And if it redlining works for you, then send me a redlined copy. And okay. It's a combination of comments sometimes and take this out yes. with a comment yeah. Y. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I have okay. already sent each of you the town manager draft evaluation and asked you to use track changes and comments. So we'll do the same thing with the goal document. Yes, please. Do you want to, Art? Do you want to use the one that we're already starting to trim down? That's the document that's I was the working on. Document off. dated eleven fifteen. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. It okay. doesn't. Yeah. All right. Uh, can I can I just share it though? I put my hand up again. Yes. Oh, the one of the cr uh, criteria that can be used, I was thinking, was in terms of community feedback. So I might personally, as a counselor, want to put something forward, but then there are other things that many counselors are hearing from the community, like speeding or um, 
even the waste hauler, it came with a lot of not just the zero waste, but there was a lot of community push for it. So like, what are the, so that could be one of the, not the only criteria, but that would be one of the criteria is how much of the community is, like, is asking for that. Okay. Um, I'm going to end the conversation. Note that Alicia Walker has also left the meeting. Uh, the uh, next, there is a motion. It's to refer the town manager evaluation process to the geo Gordon Governance Organization Legislation Committee for a report and recommendation based on the November 20th, 2023 Town Council discussion by, and I left, we left the date empty. Um, this is that same, that same problem we had with the, the TSO, right. the town manager one. Should we just end it uh, with the discussion and not put a date on? And they what can about put it in the April carryover 30. memo. April 30. April 30. They could always do it sooner. Sounds but... like a good idea. April yeah. 30, 2024. Is there a second? Second, Devlin Gothier. Are there any other comments or questions? Shalini, is this about this? Okay. Then we'll move to a vote. Yes. Comment? Mandy job. Yes. So am I understanding this request for referral appropriately it, like we didn't really have a discussion per se based on what discussion no, we didn't <laughs> um you know because this this is not a referral of the goals and it's not a referral of the document we talked about that's already drafted it's a couple people mentioned we need a better process but we didn't really have a discussion of it so maybe it's, uh, we just um, take that whole piece out where it says, and say recommendation by April 30th, 2024. I, I, I guess what I want to clarify is, are we aiming to simplify the process or simplify the document counselors submit or simplify the memo Paul, like or all of it, like like wh which parts are we? As since I'm on GOL, I don't know whether I'll be on it in a month. But like, what are we asking GOL to do? Yeah. Personally, I think we're asking them to look at the whole process, including In timeline, including timelines, including. Um, what the town manager is expected to submit, including whether we have mid-year conversations, including whether or not we simplify a document, et cetera, et cetera. Remember, we be, we started having that conversation at one point, and then we never got any further with it. Um, Andy. Yeah, are we going to have goals for the beginning of the year that the manager is going to work on? Uh, and uh, I also need to know that just because the finance committee always assumes that they're going to be goals that we're going to then adopt as the goals that work into the budget guidelines. So I'm a little lost now on what we're doing. All right. On the goal issue at this point, I think there seemed to be a sense, let's try to simplify them. And Pat has said she will accept suggestions from other people uh, by a date certain and send out a Word document like the document that's already in your packet dated November 15th, where the um, GOL already tried to start the process and that the idea is the GOL still has to come forward with some goals. Yes or no, Pat? Um, I think that's true because of what Andy said. So I think, but that, yeah, I think I, that we need to come up with goals to begin the year with. Right. And but then that, that will, we will, that's the very beginning of a process in which we will review creating those goals in the first place and how we evaluate the manager. And that would be due 
sometime in April. Does that make sense? And also that, that pr much prior to that would be a retreat where the new council would discuss yes. goals and priorities. Yeah. And if, and depending on how much work we're able to do in GOL, we may be able to present a lot at that in terms mm -hmm. of process to at that retreat. Because no, never mind. Andy, does that make sense? The answer is yes, we still need to have goals, even if after the new council is seated, further discussion takes place and maybe there's a revision in the goals, recognizing that you can't keep changing them if you want them accomplished. Yeah, and I'm also going to say that one of the things I need to think about is how can I trust and collaborate with all of you, not just get my way. And I that's something I want all of us to think about about the current goals right now. Yep. To answer your question, yeah, I think that works. What's most important in the end is that uh, town manager needs to begin work on the uh, budget that he's going to present to us on May 1st by Jan you know, very beginning of January, which is why we try and do the guidelines by the end of December. And uh, we just have to accept the fact that we're gonna come up with something that is going to allow us to do that, that incorporates the, in the, the goals as Pat described them. Right. And uh, if they're adopted by the council and the two fit together and we go forward, this is what makes the whole timing so difficult is the relationship of evaluation to future goals to financial guidelines to the budget. And they all fit together in a process. And to decouple one from the other begins to erode the ability to have any um, continuity. Uh, so there is a motion I made and I think we've modified, and it's to refer the town manager evaluation process to the GOL committee for a report and recommendation uh, by April 30th, 2024. Is there a second? Second, Dublin Gothier. Thank you. Shalini. One other aspect of the goal setting is to include some kind of measurement of like, I know there were a lot of examples of we had so many events, so many trainings, but I wasn't clear what is the impact of those trainings or how many people are attending them or even in terms of community events to have some kind of measure like we're doing all these trainings, but how many people are participating and what is the impact of these So to include that in the process. Pam? Okay. Are there any further discussion regarding this motion? Any further changes to the motion? No. All right. Then we begin, I guess, with myself. Lynn Griesmer is an aye. Uh, Mandy Johanna. Aye. Anika Lopes. Aye. Michelle Miller is absent. Dorothy Pam. Yes. Pam Rooney. Yes. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Aye. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker's absent. Uh, Shalini Balmel. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. It's unanimous with two counselors absent. Um, the appointments were done. We're going on to. Uh, yes. Can I just ask my question? The comments to Pat on the town manager goals are due to her by when, and then when do they come back for the council to look at? They have to come back to the council on the 4th. So, Pat, <laughs> the 29th, so you're going to need to re by the 27th, Monday. Got a lot of homework. Okay, uh, Pat, could, can do you have a word document of them of those goals? 
Okay, Athena, could you send it out and ask people to return comments to Pat? Thank you. Uh, committee liaison reports, Mandy Jo. Um, I guess the only thing I wanna say is we're still working on nuisance, um, but the council may receive some comments regarding a nuisance bylaw draft because we requested um, that public feedback requests and and seeking of public feedback be sent to a number of groups and the the document that was sent said you can email the five counselors that are on the committee or the entire town council so okay. so just don't be confused as to where that's coming from but but that's what it is the document the the latest draft of nuisance will be in the crc packet that athena will post at some point <laughs> um, but the one that they are commenting on is is in the last CRC packet. This is a carryover item. It, it may or may not be a CRC carryover item, depending on how far CRC gets. It will be no matter what a town council carryover oh. item, because the council won't have time to vote on it, even if it's out of CRC. Okay. But it, it may or may not be out of CRC. I just was trying to figure out where it was going to fit in the pecking order. Um, it, it, and we did get one of those comments and I did refer it to, I did suggest that people, the person that submitted it, put it in through the general public comment. Okay. Um, elementary school building, Kathy. It's the same report I gave last time. The next full committee member meeting is the eighth. We did get, uh, we're on our way to going before the committee. Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. We just haven't quite got the exact dates for that. And uh, we're on our way to starting to dig at the site in, in the early spring. I mean, the first package is due to go out, assuming we hit, go over Con Con Conservation Commission and Planning Board to get there. So there is a meeting on the 8th. When does the fence go up? Kathy, when does the fence go up? Uh, um, I think it goes up right when this, the package goes out in like February, so maybe March, because the first part is moving dirt and bringing soil and really preparing the ground. So the physical construction isn't until the summertime. So it, it's got a two phase, but I think the fence has to be up while they're digging. So and no one climbs on the equipment that will be there. Frank, that's why I asked. Uh, Finance Committee, Andy. I think between the written report and all that you've heard already that you've had the report. Okay. GOL, Pat. I have nothing else to add right now. Jones Library, Anika. Well, I was out of town and reception last week, so I'm gonna call on both Paul and Anna if I could please. There was no meeting last week. There was no Jones Library meeting. Uh, I can do TSO though. Oh, just... sorry. No, no, Paul, you were fine. I was just TSO on. Th this is past yeah. 11 p.m. humor. Um, okay, so I'm going to take, which isn't funny. Uh, so I'm going to take TSO. TSO worked on the carryover memo for a while. We also uh, started to talk about the, um, the the two separate processes, one of establishing safety zone criteria and the second of talking about traffic calming at Cushman Scott. We sought um, feedback from tra the Transportation Advisory Committee regarding the traffic calming at Cushman Scott. Um, thank you, Athena, for sending out the speed study data to Tracy today. Um, they are meeting on December 4th. A uh, special thank you to the chair of TAC for calling that um, meeting. They were not planning on meeting, and so we appreciate them accommodating our timeline. Um, November 30th, I think. Sorry, thank you. 30th to, to be ready for our meeting the next week. Thank you. Um, so the other thing about this is that we are separating out. That will not be, um, those are traffic calming measures and the safety zone criteria will need to be something separate so that we don't accidentally create precedent. Um, we also got updates on waste hauler, uh, which is continuing to press along, but we haven't final, they haven't finished um, reading through and summarizing all of the RFI responses. And then um, we also talked about Shalini's uh, community engagement proposal, which will be coming back to TSO with a slightly different um, motion on how to proceed with that moving forward. Okay. Uh, are there any committee uh, liaison reports? 
Yes, Dorothy. You're muted. Okay. CSSJC is having two public forums, um, one on CRESS online forum on the 29th of November at 6.30 to 8.30, and a public forum in person in, at Town Hall on Saturday, the 2nd of December from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Paul, anything from town managers? No. Nope. Uh, with regard to president's report, I didn't do one this week. I had something else I was working on. Uh, and any future agenda items? Besides the fact that we may get nuisance bylaw. <laughs> um, Councillor counselor comments? I have one. Yes. Um, when you say future agenda items, I you did a miraculous job for about five meetings or four meetings in a row, and I was sure it was to encourage people to run for council, that we could have short, shorter council meetings. So um, I know agenda management is tough, particularly at the end of the year, but I just have a request. We really try to, um, if we can't get to things, we just can't get to things. And so our own timeline should be longer that we shouldn't expect everything to move quite as fast. So that's just a request. I mean, I don't think there was any way of avoiding tonight because we also rightfully opened it up for public, but it looks like the fourth is gonna be painful again. So we'll we'll figure it out. Um, we'll see. Um, are there any other comments? Seeing none, I'm going to adjourn the meeting at 11.25. Thank mm -hmm. you.